Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Seventy years ago, last month, the Treaty of Paris entered into force. It gave birth to the steel and coal community. And this great idea used the industry of six countries as a tool to unite Europe, to bring peace and prosperity to our continent. And I believe that that idea is still very modern today, particularly in the very challenging environment we are going through. Industry and Europe, that is the couple we need to strengthen. That is also the aim of the EU Commission's new industrial strategy, which we as Euro Chambers welcome. And, and it is, of course, the purpose of today's discussion. I have in that context a few messages for you. First, Europe needs a strong, innovative and competitive industry. The European economy cannot be only based on services. But we must make sure that policies and regulations do not make it impossible to develop industrial activities and to push them out of Europe to less regulated economies. Second, we need a well-functioning single market. We have great universities in Europe. We have great companies in Europe. They all need to cooperate cross-border to become stronger, profitable, innovative. That's why we have created Europe. It is a great opportunity for our industries. Third, we need a network of good international trade agreements. Our industries can only grow if they can export our world-class products. I think we are sometimes too demanding, too complicated, too ideological when it comes to such agreements. Those agreements benefit our companies, our industry, and therefore our jobs. It is regrettable that we do not have such agreements with our main trading partners. Fourth, we need industrial leadership. Look at our car, aircraft or steel industry. They are world leaders. And in some areas, it makes us less dependent of others. I prefer, therefore, the term strategic leadership to strategic autonomy. As an autonomy is a kind of illusion in a global economy where raw materials are spread around the world. But we can be leaders, especially in the industrial sector. What we need is an organized international trade system. Not deglobalization is needed, but a diversification of our supply chains, our energy sources, and the diversification of our trading partners. Fifth, the green and digital transitions are challenges for the industry. A lot has already been achieved by the industries of the past two decades. Industries are much more innovative and cleaner than they were before. But we need to find the right balance to take into account the pace of technological developments. And we need a global level playing field to avoid losing industries to other parts of the world. To achieve all this, we need a constant dialogue between policymakers and industry. Chambers of Commerce and Industry, that's why they were created and are called like that, those chambers can play a key role here in advising and supporting mainly small and medium-sized companies, training of their people, and yes, indeed, we need the right skills to make our industries work. And again here, Chambers of Commerce have a role to play. Today we have this dialogue on the future of Europe's industrial strategy, and I appreciate that a lot. Thank you, Kerstin Jorna, for being there, for representing the European Commission today. I had the pleasure of working with you in our previous roles in European affairs, and I look forward to doing that once again. We industries, we as citizens are facing huge challenges, inflation, supply chain problems, energy shortages, a terrible war in Ukraine. But despite all this, I remain optimistic. Since I started in public life, I was involved in the management of a number of crisis situations. The Kosovo war, fighting terrorism, the financial crisis, the euro crisis, and recently the COVID pandemic. Each time 
we managed to find a solution to get out of the crisis. And we found the solution because as Europeans, as a European Union, we stood together. And that is what we need today. Thank you.